The Norwegian Automobile Association just completed a two-day test with 27 EVs to find the definitive answer to the questions, can any EV even get close to the range quoted by WLTP, and what is the true real-world range of modern EVs? I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. The WLTP figures, oh, by the way, WLTP is short for World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure. Yeah, we seem to have lost the H for harmonized and V for vehicle. And it refers to a specific test completed under very strict laboratory conditions to give an estimate of the range and efficiency you're likely to get from any particular new EV. Well, these are pretty much the same as the figures in the new car windscreens in the showroom stating the miles per gallon you can expect. Yes, all you viewers out there, almost every single EV driver once drove petrol and diesel cars. And we all knew that we'd never ever get that windscreen economy. It was just a guide. Well, now that we've chosen to drive EVs, do the latest WLTP figures for them represent exactly the same, a figure we'll never get, or being electric, should we expect far more? And many viewers claim I'm biased and I use figures most EV drivers will never get. So the Norwegian AA has now come to my rescue. Let's see who's right. Well, back in January, I launched a video featuring one of their many fantastic test reports regarding EVs. This one about the cold winters and the likely range loss. And spoiler alert, the results were surprisingly good. EVs perform well in harsh cold winters. But why is that surprising when Norway, Sweden, Denmark and Finland, along with Canada and lots of North America, all have very much colder winters? but they cope amazingly well. Anyway, here they took 27 EVs currently on sale in Norway from the cheap to the expensive and over a two day period, subjected them to a test route that ranged in height from sea level to over 3000 feet, temperatures ranging from seven Celsius to 17. All 27 cars covered exactly the same route at exactly the same speed. Now, unusually, this was not intended to find the EV with the longest range, although they reported that anyway. It's perfectly logical that the EV with the biggest battery pack would have the longest range, and here that was exactly what they got. The winner for the longest range on a single charge was the Lucid Air, with a 118 kilowatt hour battery pack, achieving an amazing 514 miles, 828 kilometers. But as I said, that was not the prime purpose of this test. The prime purpose was to look at the factory quoted WLTP figures for each of the EVs and compare what they actually achieved against what they claimed they should achieve. And here the Lucid Air was claimed to have a range of 596 miles, 960 kilometers. WLTP yet only achieved 540. That's a shortfall of 81 miles, 13.7%. So in this test, although the Lucid Air went the furthest, it was nearly the worst of all the cars tested for how close it got to the WLTP figure. It's an amazingly poor result. When we look at the WLTP figures, it's reasonable to expect them to be somewhere close to reality, but here it was off by approaching 100 miles. Nowhere near. So just before we dive into those figures, let's just take a look at the actual longest range achieved uh, by the NAA with any of these EVs. And the winners we already know, £150,000 EV with a massive battery pack. But second place was almost a quarter of the cost with a battery approaching two thirds the size. That was the Tesla Model 3. It achieved an incredible 448 miles, 721 kilometers. So viewers, this is an actual real figure achieved by a response Expected motoring organization during a two-day test up and down mountains. Who's exaggerating now? Oh, by the way, Model 3 was also 11 miles more than the WLT figure stated it should achieve as a double win. BMW iX was next with 432 miles, 691 kilometers, then the Audi E6 e-tron 410, Model Y 407, Polestar 4 391, the Ford Capri 385 miles, 616 kilometers. That's half a dozen EVs with a range around 400 miles. 
although the battery size once again varied with the Audi pulsed on BMW needing a huge around about 100, 100 plus kilometer hours to achieve this whereas the Model 3 is a 75 kilowatt hour pack this shows up the efficiency now coming on to how close they get to the stated WLTP figures, the Lucid disappears right down towards the bottom of the table. Model Y now takes the number one slot. It achieved an actual range of 405 miles, 652 kilometres, which is 41 miles more than WLTP said it should. Close behind were the Zika 7X, exceeded the target by 32 miles. Then a whole slew of others like the BYD Tang, MGS5, VW ID7, Polestar 4, BYD Sea Lion, Lotus Amea, Porsche Macan and BMW iX. Probably the last to be considered as good or passable out of this group compared to WLTP is the Skoda Elrock. Really good, missed matching the WLTP figure by just 1.2 miles. Well, are these important? Well, it's up to you. Do you care if quoted 400 miles, you only get 350? If you only use it for daily commute of 20 miles, that's your decision. But at the extreme end, it definitely should. The Toyota BZ4X is an example of this, with a stated range of 310 miles. Yeah, many, many car testers, when it first launched, claimed to get around half that if they actually use the air conditioning. It seems that the Toyota WLTP figures are based on you not using the AC or heating or pretty much anything else in the car. By the way, the latest models now have a much bigger battery. But to get around half the range in the real world makes you wonder if this is not just an updated diesel gate where manufacturers fake the test to flatter their EV, knowing full well nobody will actually get this. If that is the case, yeah, you should be worried. How about at the top of the league? Should you always choose one of these all the time? No. If you're able to charge at home, the cost of only home charging for all of your journeys for a whole year, it's going to be around about £150. Versus the worst, which is probably going to be £200 or £250. Not a major concern to most people. However, if you cannot charge at home and have to pay 79 pence or thereabouts, then yes, it would make a huge difference. Now, in my opinion, these tests should be viewed and considered for three main reasons. Well, first, it's just to confirm the doubters that EVs covering 400 miles on the single charge, they're now with us. The numbers are increasing, along with the ranges that they've achieved. This is important to those few who have motoring needs that demand it. The second reason is the cost of fueling your car. If you do a higher mileage than average or cannot charge at home, the cost of public charging should definitely be factored into your calculation. It could cost you £1,000 more or £1,000 less to charge depending on which EV you choose. Well, third, it would ind indicate to me that the rot that surrounded Dieselgate is still inside the motor industry, with some EV manufacturers seeming to deliberately make claims that are wildly different to what you could or actually will get. If they just lied to me about range, then I'd be wondering what else they've lied to me about, or where else they've cut costs or corners so that I will actually get less than I expected or was promised. Well, these practices, common to EVs and petrol and diesel ice cars, need to stop and test like this completed by a truly independent Norwegian AA. They're vital in both giving us the true facts while exposing those that aren't. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave. If you've enjoyed this, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so we can notify you when we launch videos. Big thank you to all our Patreon members for supporting the channel and also to our YouTube members. I'm Dave.